Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. This episode of Mopar Connection, we're doing a little bit of work on our 69 Dodge Charger Brazen. And ever since we tried to do the Hot Rod Power Tour, we had a little bit of an overheating issue. Now everyone who was on Power Tour can attest, it was really hot that week and a lot of cars were boiling over. A lot of cars just got hurt because it was so hot. Now previously, we always ran peak antifreeze, the 50-50 pre-diluted mix. So we never had to add any water. And typically the car liked to operate around 190, 195. But ever since Power Tour, it's been really up in the 200s. Even just driving around town, casually taking the kids out for ice cream. It's just been running a little hot. Now a lot of factors could be involved in that and one could be our mixture's way off and that's true because it has been diluted with some water. So we got on the horn with Evans Cooling and Evans Cooling said we can completely solve your problem. Now many of you guys might already know Evans Cooling, they're a pretty big name in the industry as they are one of the only coolants that are allowed by the NHRA, the NMCA. They're also one of the few that's allowed with some of the biggest sanctioning bodies in both racing and in the restoration world. The Evans Cooling Waterless product is really unlike any other conventional antifreeze. And we're gonna get into the weeds a little bit more and we're also gonna have an article on the magazine, MoparConnectionMagazine.com, totally deep diving into a lot of the science that makes the Evans cooling product so much more superior than running plain water or say any other conventional antifreeze. And we were kind of on the fence, to be honest, when we were first introduced to Evans cooling. I was kind of like, how, how good could it really be? But the more we dug into it, the more it revealed itself to be a really superior product. So what we're gonna do today is that we're going to completely drain the cooling system of our 535 stroker wedge we're gonna purge it clean. We're gonna help blow all the remaining water and coolant out. We're gonna run their prep fluid through it, get the car up to temperature, and then we're gonna drain it again, and then we're gonna put the real stuff in. And we're gonna show you all the steps that goes into it and why we're doing it. There's a lot of science to it, and there's a lot of really interesting benefits that typically you just don't talk about when it comes to engine cooling. So there's a few things that I had to be educated on when it came to cooling systems and how the Evans waterless system worked versus traditional antifreeze or just using water. First and foremost was the big concern regarding pressure. High pressure systems, and that is effectively water turning into vapor and then pressurizing your cooling system, that does a lot of damage to your conventional cooling system. It's all your hoses, hose clamps, all your different fittings, that's where you start getting fissures and leakage. And what that is primarily due to is the water itself boiling inside of your cooling system. Unlike traditional water systems or even a pre-diluted mix, the Evans cooling system has a boiling point of 375 degrees. That is literally 150 degrees higher of a boiling point than traditional straight water or even a premixed system. So again, guys, huge, huge difference in that factor. The second thing is if you're afraid of actual freezing, if you're in a colder climate, the Evans cooling is good up to negative 40 degrees. So unless you're out in outer Siberia, I really don't think you're gonna have a problem with the Evans coolant freezing inside of your engine. Now, there's some other benefits to it that aren't really talked about that we really want to touch on is number one, the corrosion problem. Now, obviously we're running in aluminum heads, but we've got an iron block and we have an aluminum water pump. What you find is that those water or pre-mixed systems, they tend to corrode away at your engine block over time and you start getting really orange or rusty coolant in your system. This actually has zero corrosive properties in it because again, it doesn't have any water in it. So you're not eating away at your engine block. So that's a benefit for sure. And again, because it's not pressurized, it's not going to start pitting and eating away under high pressure 
of those sensitive components and you're not gonna have those kind of seal failures or gasket failures that you normally would, again, because of high pressure. Now, a lot of you guys might be a little gun shy about swapping over to Evans Cooling because of the price point. But here's the kicker. It doesn't denigrate like a traditional antifreeze does, which means that effectively, this is gonna outlast your engine. The Evans Cooling product is for the lifetime of your engine. You're never gonna have to change it, again, because it doesn't break down and it doesn't stop doing what it's supposed to do. It is a superior chemical bond. So this coolant going through all the heat cycles, even if you live in an area where you have really severe winters and really hot summers, it's not gonna break down like you would find with a normal antifreeze or additive. So that in itself means that you're not buying new product every year. If anything, if you got a little bit of a leak, you might need to buy a little bit of a refill, but you're not gonna be replacing the whole system year after year, which typically happens with a lot of our traditional classic car cooling systems. Now let's talk about heat. A lot of people are concerned because of the chatter online that they find that their Evans cooling swap actually runs a little bit hotter. And they're going, oh man, what the heck? I thought this was supposed to make my engine run cooler. Not exactly. And I think it bears a little bit of noting as to what's happening. Your thermostat is only reading the water temperature, the coolant temperature that's running through the circuit. What it's not reading is the actual heat of the engine itself. And what we found out was that the Evans cooling product will actually run five degrees hotter, maybe even 10 degrees hotter, but the engine itself is running cooler. Well, how can that be? It's because the cooling product itself, the waterless product, is actually doing a superior job of wicking or drawing that heat out of the engine and running it through the coolant. So the coolant itself might be running hotter, but the engine itself is running cooler because the coolant is doing a better job of pulling that heat out. And you'll find that with a heat gun. If you take a laser thermostat and start shining it around your engine before and after, you're gonna find that's exactly the case, is that the engine might be running at temperature and be at a certain degree, but when you get the Evans cooling product in it, it, the coolant itself will run hotter, but the engine is running cooler. All right. Thermostat says 190. Let's see what the laser pointer says. Go ahead and turn it off. All right. We didn't run long enough to kick off the second fan, but 190 degrees is plenty for what we're testing here. All right, well, we gotta let it cool off and then we're gonna drain it. We tried this a couple times already. It just makes a huge mess but we got to purge the system and get everything out of it. So we're gonna to try to throttle it as we blow air into the system to get everything out of the heads and blow it out. I'm gonna to try to throttle it using a little bit of both of throttling with my hands here. Contact. I'll tell you what, the towel down there is doing most of the work. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of it. I think we got it. Go ahead and kill it. Trust me, it did not go this smoothly the first couple times we tried this. Nope. Um, <laughs> it is all over me and all over the engine compartment. So we're gonna hook everything back up, and then we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the prep, get it up to temperature, let it all drain out again, and do this one more time. All right, we're gonna start 
pouring in our Evans prep fluid. This is to help flush the last little bit of water from the cooling system. It actually molecularly grabs onto the water and helps beat it out. Um, this is really just a second step and is not meant to be ran in the engine. You don't want to run this. This is bad. Don't do that. It is only for flush. Not intended to be used as engine coolant. Flush only. I'm sure some lawyer also said, do not drink, but we'll see you. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's Welcome to America, idea. folks. Yeah, Don't sad. drink the coolant. Yeah. All right, let's pour this in. It's a sad day when you got to say that on things that people should know is no good. Yeah. Now, if you notice, you're looking at this stuff, it's clear going in. When you drain it out, it should, uh, it should discolor as it pulls your coolant out. They, they want you to run it for about 10, 15 minutes. Am I... Okay. Well, it filled that bucket on, it's past two gallons. This thing holds some fluids. It does. I got a lot of water weight. I think it's like two and a half gallons is what they hold with. You got three in it. I got three. Okay. Okay, but you know what? I'm at a good running level. All right. Okay, so I think we're gonna run it. Go ahead. Filling it up then. Yep. Here we go. Super exciting. Pouring coolant into a car. Yep. Makes for good TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the big David Freiberger pour for the long pour. The yeah. long pours, yeah. yeah. Uh I like doing the long pour in these tiny little holes in these valve guys. Mine are terrible. It's like you I start out there and then just shove it down in the hole. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty good at the longboard. I could probably give Freiburger a run for his money. There you That's go. That's officially a challenge if you see this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things that we would challenge Roadkill on. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll, we... I'll take you in a, in a long pour any day, dude. There you go. <laughs> okay, it's taking quite a bit here. I just don't want to spill any. We got two and three quarter maybe two and two thirds. Well, I'll leave the cap off anyway. I, mean, off. I want to see it circulate. <sighs> All right, you want to turn it? All right. Contact.
Okay, the one last thing that the guys at Evans Cooling want you to do is that they give you this refractometer. What it's going to do is it's going to test how much water is in the system using this little, this little scope. All right, so we had to calibrate this first using the pure stuff. We drop a, you know, a little bit in there and then we take the little rubber boot off. We take a screwdriver, we calibrate it so it's at 57. So now that it's fully calibrated, we're gonna take our dropper, go right into here. We don't need nearly that much. Just drop just a bit right down the front. Put the rest in, don't need all that. Put it on, hold it up to the light, exactly at 55. I don't think it's gonna do. Using multiple prisms here. You yeah. Kind of get up. That's it. There. there. Make the picture big, then you should be able to see it. Ah. Because you got to. I had it. Right. You got to use all the prisms to get. I had it. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. But we're at 55, and that's exactly where they want us. So that means we're pretty much running pure Evans coolant. We've done our temperature test. We got it up to temperature. The fans kicked on. Everything was happy. Uh, we did not see a change in temperature from our coolant. We know obviously things are gonna be a little different when we're out on the road, the fans kick on, we're going back and forth in traffic, but we're excited to see the improvement to the engine efficiency. And the best part about it is that we're not gonna see any sort of depletion. We're not gonna see the coolant break down over time and we're not gonna get any rust. It's a zero corrosive material, so it does a far better job of wicking heat out of the heads, out of the engine block, and we're just gonna have a far more efficient running engine. So hopefully this video, in addition to the article that we're gonna have published over at Mopar Connection Magazine, is gonna help educate you guys on what we learned today about Evans Waterless Cooling, and definitely go check out Evans Waterless Coolant over at their website, there's a ton more information. They've got a whole bunch of content to check out, lots of videos, lots of tutorials on it, lots of testimony on it. And we're gonna get the charger out on the road, we're gonna see how she does, and we'll uh, keep you updated on the progress of this car and other project cars that we got here at Mopar Connection. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching Mopar Connection Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and maybe share it with your friends. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please check us out over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you.